Are we starting yet? And what was that? What are those numbers at all? Oh, okay. Then, without further ado, welcome everybody and good evening to the Experience Points Podcast. And today I am your host for a very special episode that has Game of the Year and Spoiler Cast for, well, you know, us. Especially saying that his actual game of the year. Or however, we all know that the game of the year is Final Fantasy XIV, so let's get right down to it. Today, I'll be your host, Blackout, Eric. I will be joined by Kim the Great. In other words, known as Kim the Crackhead. Yeah, Kim <laughs> the Crackhead. Kim the Trust Crackhead. And Kevin. Hello, all. Let's you know, that's you're the one that doesn't names. <laughs> All right. And in the background in the studio will be Zero Finn, who's having some technical difficulties today. But he, he loves you all. He says hi. So anyway, as I was saying... Oh. I don't Zero think he, said he was going to um give us gifts after the quiz, but he said, screw that. He's just sending us all shirts. So thank you, Zero Sin, for the shirts that I wonder what you like. Alrighty. So anyways. Oh, let me kill myself. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna laugh if this gets recorded and, and, and he was the there man. the whole time. Oh, that'd be bootleg. So yeah, so let's get right on ahead and start it. We're going to be talking about me, Kevin, and Kim's game of the year, which I'm 99.9999, I'm 100.2% sure, actually, that was Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. And at this very moment, we are finishing our expert roulette dungeon run. It's had a bit of epicness, but it's going on well enough. But I anyway, thought we agreed it was Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Ah, that's a <laughs> I mean, I like the nostalgia, <laughs> but that game had some issues. That game was lazy. Very. So anyways, let's start off with a simple question. And I will start with you first, Kim. What is your favorite, what makes Final Fantasy XIV and Walker your favorite game of the year? The story. That's plain and simple, the story. After I've been playing it for six years now, I have become invested, and now it's just, like, I feel like I have to, I have to finish the story out, I have to know what happens, and now that the story has finished out, now I'm like, okay, what, what next, what happens next? Like, I'm still, like, it's the story. Most definitely. I agree with you all, I mean, I agree with you on what, you know what's next, because I am very curious, too. Because, you know, we're going with a whole new direction. So I'm wondering, will like, we even have the Scions with us? Or will we have, like, a new cast of characters? Will we get a time jump? Like, everybody wants a time jump? I don't know. Everybody wants a time jump so that the twins are of age and they can say, they can be they can advanced. Them. Them. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> What is your favorite? What is your reason why Final Fantasy XIV and Walker is your game of the year? Uh, it's the story, really. I mean, I've always the story's always been really good. I mean, you know, there, there are some plot holes like looking up at the moon and not seeing a big ass tower up there. I mean, you gotta see something. Glamorous. But, you know, glamorous. Come on, if they can do it at Walker's Reach, they can do it on the moon. It's so bad. And I guess uh, so it's my turn and in Walker, yeah, I would definitely say it was a story too. And that's not to say that it has other good things going for it because there's some music is banging, I love the, the soundtrack, but the story really is what brought me in. Like they did a really good job in going into the details of like, you know, like pretty much like 
foreclosing every little like possibility of what if other than you know like why can't we see a big ass freighter or why can't we see towers on the moon? But Maybe I'm not worried. Too far away to actually see it. But, but like mean, right yeah. now, the way things are, you 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 think you'd still see some like big ass glowing red spiral magic thing. But that's really the only one we're there. And that's like the war. That was the warding for um Zodiac. So it would make sense to who knows. Maybe the atmosphere doesn't allow us to see it. Maybe we could see it if we had a telescope. Maybe. Those are big. Those are some big ass towers. No. Well. Well. Okay. So yeah. That that's that's actually where where I get where I'm. I'm I'm not thinking so much like seeing with the naked eye. You know, like you're just looking up in the sky. I'm I'm thinking like we got plenty of telescopes and people looking up at the at the stars and stuff, right? So yeah. what's going on with that? <laughs> That's my main thing. But anyways, can continue your. Well, okay. So I mean, we we saw the number one thing, but let's see. What are you most looking forward to now that we've actually completed the six point oh pass? What are you looking forward to today? <laughs> 7.0 6.0 what did I say No no I'm saying you're saying what what do I look what are we looking forward to most after 6.0 I said 7.0 Oh Okay that's cute yeah Baby baby 6.1 first Yeah 6.1 yes I believe I'm looking forward to 6.1 um, too That's what we got for the lions raid I want to see that lions raid how what they're going to do with that I won't lie to you. I haven't actually looked into any details about the Alliance Ray. I don't know what the theme for it is or anything. So it's the twelve. Oh, so they really did just go along with the. From, wait, how do you, wait? How can it be the twelve? Because you know the twelve are like gods. So how can the twelve be an Alliance Ray? Well, it's uh, we're this supposed to. And I think it's covering, like, well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the twelve like. Like it's each each boss is going to be one of the twelve that would work out because it's three alliance raids and four bosses per raid. Um, but I think it's going to cover like their real, uh, like who they were. I okay, think I think but... I think I'm pretty sure MSL. Well, they I mean, this isn't spoiler really because they already said that that's what the raids were going to be before uh, 6.0 even released. They said it was going to be that, um, but Emma Selk in the in the uh, story talks about like, don't you even know? Don't don't you wonder the true identity of the twelve or something like that? And yeah. and, and so I, you know, that that I know that was like a nod towards the upcoming alliance. Okay, fair enough. But if that is the case, then the twelve are technically good. Why we got to fight them? Well, why, why we got to fight the twelve? Surprise, maybe maybe someone them. maybe somebody maybe someone tossed some crystals in and summoned them. Maybe they're oh. not really good. We don't know. Or we'll maybe go they're find out Mark. This garden. Um, I mean, Heidelin's good, and we still had to fight her. That's, what that's I just what she wanted to test it, but fine. Point taken. I just hope they aren't no more just addled up primals. <laughs> well, kind of they are. I'm pretty sure because you know. Um, you know, back yeah, in ARR, was it the ARR Ashians were trying to convince uh, the um, the uh, little little, Alamegan, little the, Al the Alamegans Ralger. to uh, to summon Ralger, Yeah, yeah, I remember. And even and even Gaius is like, why don't you call upon the twelve and and they'll and they'll indulge upon your aether just like just like a primal would. Yeah. It was the same trick that served you so well at Carthano. <sighs> wow, <laughs> you're getting word for word on that. I think you've been doing some praetorium too much. Yeah, I really <laughs> have. <laughs> he, he goes to sleep at night dreaming about praetorium. Oh, no. guys, is monologuing in my dreams well, again. I do pray that I get prey over on uh, Castle like I've been getting quite a bit lately. I, I really hope that, and, and I and I know they're not going to do this, but I really hope that the Tome Gear that they release, the Final Fantasy IV related stuff, um, it gets like 
a non tome glam of it. You mean so you can do it like a wait, you mean so you can have any job be it basically? Yeah. Or 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 at least or at least be or at least be you know, be a lower level and be able to use it. Are you just saying it so um feel you can right. be um, really, uh, of course. <laughs> you better level up. I'm working uh, on it. I need not to level up, up get through MSQ because it doesn't matter from I could be level ninety on her right now, I'm still in the very true near the end of ARR. I can go buy mine right now. I was actually just not spending any tunes until I figured out what I was gonna do, but since I crafted my own full crafting set and I can just go on ahead and get the caster set, so I'll be happy. Happy times. So they happy also news. announced in six point one that they're gonna have a uh, combination quest that you'll get if you did all of the um the roll quests. Yeah. So probably one you didn't get all together? Yeah. They, they, so they, those they, of us um, that did all five roll quests will get con a continuation of the story. The thing that's odd about that is that they did the um they did the finale of the um crafting slash gathering and stuff in the studio in this pack. Well, that's probably because it's not like a. It's probably because that's not like a huge like. Well, because you you know, I I kind of feel it's possible that doing maybe doing all five of the roll quests maybe that leads to the alliance raid, or that uh, it's gonna be either that or the alliance raid will be like a a fork in the road like it'll be an offshoot of the MSQ. Um, I can see it being the case. I don't see it having anything to do with the roll quest because a lot of people will be like, Oh, so now you're forcing me to level at least five jobs to do it? Yeah, they, I guess they wouldn't do that. I honestly think the Alliance Raid should be like so entangled with the MSQ that it's uh, required, like Crystal Tower. Mm, yeah, I mean, ARR did And technically speaking, the, um, the only one that really wasn't is the uh, Shadow Bringers near one because you know, like they literally even like paid homage to no. these things and all these at the end of the no, game. No, no, only Crystal Tower is mandatory for MSQ. No, I know it's mandatory, but I'm just saying, like you know, you had contact, like they mentioned the Sky Pirates, and they showed a little um sky cutter, a mana cutter with slip of things that they fly around in, and then they had like oh, yeah. the Thor one, one with a giant ass um airship. Well, we don't know. We don't know if they'll do anything with the near raid connection, like they did with Shadowbringers, because they still can. They could, but I don't think they will. I can, well, I mean, they might with like. Cause I mean, Shad Storm, like Stormblood one didn't have uh, the Ivalis ones didn't really have a connection uh, until Shadowbringers when it became like mandatory to get through that to do Boja. Other than that, it was just a side story. Well, remember, you kind of knew it was going to happen because um, at the end of the High Belief quest, they did in fact have the dude from Bojang there. We didn't even know, you know, damn, we didn't even know what it was. We actually thought it was MSQ related right there because it was just a Garlean, you know, talking Garlean friends. But yeah, um, so, okay, next question I pose to each of you, and I will once again start with Kim because she's the crackhead that probably does it more than anybody. <laughs> Kim, what is your favorite dungeon slash instance in Endwalker so far, out of the ones that were released in Endwalker? How, that's like a very, very loaded question. Because okay, I, I've done all of the dungeons for this expansion so many times, like dozens of times each team. Uh, with, yeah. exception of the, with exception of some of the um, metal mineys, I haven't done them quite as, as much, but I've done them enough times. You mean because you can't do it without the trust? Okay, yeah, we get no, that. So. No, it's because they're level 90, so what's the point of farm, like going and farming it, like if I'm not getting experience points? So I, don't, I do those for roulettes, and that's it, basically. Well, no, I agree with you, but I mean, you still have the opportunity of doing it. Let's say you do it just to cap your tunes every week. You're going to do at least one of the three, like, five times a week. 
But anyway, uh, you still didn't answer the question, my dear. What is your favorite dungeon? Um, I want to say, like, it was the 89 dungeon. Mm -hmm. But I think, or no, it was the 87 dungeon, but I think it's a tie between um, the 85 and the 89. Okay, let me ask for why, because I never cared for the 85 dungeon that much. I mean, it, it's well, probably, all I can say, that's probably my least favorite of the dungeons. It, that, it that was. That thing makes me sad. That's, yeah, the, that's really the part that dungeon. I love about it. I love that it really, like, it doesn't feel like it just has the story going with it a little bit more. Um, okay, I felt no, bad when the, mother, when the mother and her kids like the mom turned into turned into a monster, and all the kids gave in yeah, to this fair and turned in. Sad. That 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 was I, I didn't. Oh, it upset me. The dead's end is also one of my favorite ones too, just because I like the story behind. I, I do. I love them all, but the '85 one sucked when I first started doing it because I didn't know what the hell was going on, and the story was still super raw to me because it was like as it was happening and shit. But now I'm doing it, and I just, I, I kind of like the layout, I like, uh, everything's on fire, and it just looks so, like, like shit's really <laughs> going down. Everything's on fire. She's, she's, just th she's just thinking about the, the, the trailer. The world is on fire. <laughs> well, no, it's like everything's, like, real, like, now you know, like, shit's getting real. Like, you thought you thought it was before when you are taking down the tower of Zot and Babel, but then, like, okay, no. That was nothing. Now shit's really getting real. Fair enough. Yeah, you're right. I, I see what you're doing there. Okay, so you like the 85 dungeon. Kevin, what is your favorite dungeon? Um, I already know. Fine, you tell me what my favorite dungeon is. Well, it could be one or two dungeons. It'll either be the Tower of Zion or it'll be the Atheoscope. I think it's Atheoscope for him. And why, why do you think that, Kim? Because the callbacks to the previous characters. That yeah, would be why I would say if it's that one, yes. The science but, yeah. long past. And, and, and why, why do you think it's a Tower of Zot, Eric? Because it's a throwback to Final Fantasy IV with the Mega Sisters. It's got the classic spells like slow and um, confusion and all that other good stuff. But why not Tower of Babel? Because it's... Because it's not as Final Fantasy IV-ish, because, you know, like, Zod even has the music going, Babel has its own thing going. So, Tower of Babel was awesome, because they had, um, Dr., um, what's-his-face from Final Fantasy IV, and it did both uh, forms. It had yeah. the, first, the first form, and then it had the co combination form. And the the thing that that, that kind of sucked about that dungeon is that the last boss was Anima. When yeah, when I when I, I, I really feel like that they missed a chance of using Rubicon. Um, yeah, or something. So uh, Tower of Zot was awesome because they had the Maga sisters, but I I kind of disliked that they did um, the two for the two first the first two sisters for the first two fights and, and then yeah. combined all three together because it just seemed monotonous having the same boss fight fights and they could have used um the wind uh the wind fiend from uh final fantasy 4 in that one okay Boo. that she should have been the last the boss honestly um and that would have been awesome so okay uh, yeah. uh a, a, Aida Scope would probably would have to be my top one because um, it was uh, it, that that dungeon played dirty and, and I can't it's not, it's really hard for me to do mechanics through my tears and that, and that dungeon was sad following you know running into Papa Limo even though you know his his soul saving you from the Griffin or or uh, Horshafon's sword and shield symbol coming out yeah, and and, and protecting you that one got and me. and Mon Breda's axe coming out to help you and then you know Minfilia leading you the way 
by making creating a path for you. Like all of that. Like anybody that does that dungeon needs to do it as a trust for the first time. They need to do it. It's, it hands down. You should you should never do that dungeon with other people at first because and and, and honestly, I plan on doing that multiple times with different trust members in the party just to see what each person says. Like I still haven't seen what Uriange says, you know, when Moan Burita's axe shows up because me, I haven't done it with him in the party yet. Um, my only issue was having to fight Am Amon a third time in the freaking story. Yeah, yeah that got a little tired. Like, that dude don't give up. Like, but but it was. But of course, I did. I, I it did it did break me when um, when Isel comes down as Shiva and and protects you. Like yeah, it's like the whole the whole thought of that dungeon still makes me emotional, and I'm like holding back right now because just thinking of it. Well, that, that's very true. And now, not to go and save mine, or just like mine's gonna be just bad compared to what you said, but you, you put so much thought in mine. My favorite is the Tower of Babel just because I love that music. I'll be bopping my head when I'm going to that dungeon. I don't know why. I just be jamming to it. I just be like freaking jam. I'll be in my zone. I'll be other mm than -hmm. that one time when I got lost and everybody died because I couldn't find my way through the door. But that's a whole different story. You got <laughs> that's the point. I like the pacing of that dungeon. There's a lot of elevators. Back when I was a kid, I used to love elevators. I'm laughing. Why? That was weird. But yeah, I just, I like how that dungeon goes. Like the pacing as well. I li like you said, I like how the first few bosses were. I was very, I was very disappointed in Animal, but whatever it is, what it is. Animal fighting like, is more than pain. I like how you pronounce it, Enema. <laughs> I said Animal. I might have said it weird, but it was Enema. Not Enema. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my favorite dungeon. Although I'm hoping that they bring out some really cool other stuff like... I'm not entirely yeah. What's your... Okay, next question though. What is your favorite song from Endwalker? Oh, that's easy. I don't know the title of it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they play it multiple times though. It's that it's that one uh, kind of sad sounding song. They even play it the, like the near the end of uh, on the end of the um, the crafter and gatherer role quest. They even like toss it in there. It's like Wait, is the one a heart song, sad song. No, no, that's, that's lively, and that, that that's that's the Rods at Han song you're you're singing. No, the way you're doing the the tempo no. you're going at is that Rods. Oh, uh, maybe my tempo is wrong, but I'm pretty sure I know what song you're going back. In the one where it seems like this, I, I think there's a singing version, like sometimes, but it's not always has the singing version. Like when they get no, there's, get there's no singing. There's no singing to it. It's it's just straight instrumental. Though okay, uh, the Ultima, the Ultima Thule is uh, is is in my top also. I love that song. I'm still here listening to it right now. I haven't uh, finished the quest yet. I can just chill in this zone all all day listening. Yeah, this the song that I, the song that I'm I'm thinking of doesn't actually. I don't think it even has an orchestra role yet. It might not. I know the song I want to have a role. Doesn't, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a role. What song, Kim? I don't remember what it was called. I told Kevin about it on Friday when I figured it sounded on my Spotify. But basically, it's the oh shit, like things are going down music that oh, plays. That song. Yeah, the, I just that, love the one that they brought. They brought that in during uh, during Shadowbringers. When when uh, when like people started turning. Well, that and that so. rainy day cut fiddle event cutscene, like when things are really getting emotional. You know, one of the million times things were getting really emotional. Well, well, there's a few of them. Oh, there's like, but there's like the one from Inwalk where they did bring in Inwalk. It's like it kind of sounds like like an opera singer, like. Ooh, 
Oh, that was the whole that's one. The, that's the song she's talking about. That one wasn't brought in Shadowbringers. That one was exclusive to Endwalker. No. No, that was in Shadowbringers. Because they, they played that true. they played that stuff every time Emmett Selk was up to something in the first. No, that's a different one. It's the, that's the song she's one. talking about, and they used it in Endwalker also. There's two it's different, but there's another one. The Shadowbringers album in Spotify. No, oh, whatever. Yeah. Oh, there's that. Yeah, I know. Are you sure that one isn't in the game? I have to look. That one seems like it would be. The, the cutscene that's right when every, everything's all of the shit's going down, and it's a rainy day, and you're out there running around, and it's that cutscene where Ardbert's trying to, like, the people yeah, are getting that's... turned, and he try, wants to help, but he can't do shit. Like, that music that I'm... plays in the Crystarium right before you're getting started on that. I want to believe I have that phone. But I don't think check. there's a computer role, role for it. I don't have to check that, but I'll do it on my link. I want to say if I got that song, I got it from the uh, Shadowbringers Treasure Dungeon. But yes, that's a very good song, but that's not in Walker there, because you yourself said that was an in Walker. We're going to need you to answer that question. That song did come it's back to play in Walker, though. Okay. Huh. For that matter, well, they can play that in Walker, too. Uh, always got to be Okay, then my favorite. What is my favorite? I, 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 I posed the question, and I'm not sure what my favorite song is. Because I like quite a few songs in this game. Remember. Um, let's see. I don't know. I can't actually answer that. I'm just going to say my answer is all of it. Including that goofy ass happy music. You know which music I'm talking about. The one that kind of sounds like you're going to a jazz club. But uh, that's not my favorite favorite. See, the song that Kim was talking about is called Paradisical Predicaments. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Because like, they, they, they use that whenever shit goes down, ever since Shadowbringers, and they did it a few times in Endblocker also. Do me a favor and link that bad boy for me so I'll just actually know what we're talking about for sure. Just link it in the, uh, the Facebook page, I'll check that out later. But, yeah, uh... Fine. I'm just gonna say, since I can't think of anything, I'm just gonna go with the old, the old shit in Walker exclusive music. Yeah, that's the one. Like the one where uh, Van Daniels doing up to his shit. Do we lose you, Anne? I see. I'm still here. You ain't here. I couldn't hear anything you said. I hear him. Oh. Uh. Um, I've heard, I heard everything he said. Yeah. I, would, I, would, I would have to say, Flow was a really good song. I think maybe my phone's getting ready to crash on me. Yeah, Flow. That's the that's the song that plays when you first fight. I have uh, lag in the game too, so maybe it's in you. When you first you fight, fight, um... Do not underestimate me. But nah. Oh yeah, that's the first, a real The first thing you fight her. Yeah. That's it, really actually, it, it actually made it into my, uh, my eight songs. Shuffle for my house. Nice. I, I kind of, like I, I was a little disappointed that Susan Calloway didn't get like a big song for this one. Even though they I did mean, do, they did put answers in there, but kind of wondered yeah, maybe I mean, they couldn't afford her. <laughs> I mean, either she takes or she, she's to probably do. doing other stuff. Doesn't he test to do the Heidman fight song? I mean, even though you know it's basically answer, um, but it's your answer. I, mean, I, I don't think it was like a new recording that they used. I think it was just a re. Uh, this is a remix. Yeah, a remix. they went deep. Because I think they're using that one. Uh, I think her name is Amanda. I'm not really sure. The one that did uh, tomorrow and tomorrow for the. Uh, um, 
the fan fest and for Shadowbringers. That was a good they, one. They, they, Shadowbringers did have a totally different female vocal. Yeah. And she, she's good. She, she's good, but I don't know. You, you hear, you, you hear, so, uh, you, you hear Susan Calloway singing, and you automatically think Heidelin. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm. more thought to check it later. But anyways, um, so going on to the next question. Hmm. Who was your favorite NPC? It could be an old one that was just in Endwalker, or it could be a brand new one. But what was your favorite NPC character? Kim, we'll start with you. Oh, um, God, I, I, I don't know. I would have to say like any of the Scions, like because especially. Um, oh, okay. If I had to pick one of one of the NPCs as far as Scions that I really respected more after this expansion, it'd be Grahatia. Like I really like started. He, he was just so such a sweetheart. Like the story development on all the characters just is just awesome. And Uriange too. But Grahatia, like he had a lot of real like oh moments. Yeah, but neither of them snuck out a window like a Stinian. <laughs> a Stinian was bad, eh? That's true. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, uh, Tataru's, uh, Carbuncle. <laughs> wow. You didn't, you didn't wow. do all the side quests like I did, so you don't know, I guess. I guess I don't, but I remember that thing back in ARR. It, ma it makes an appearance in Endwalker, too. Oh my goodness. It's still around. <laughs> that car oh buckle. Um, no, uh... I don't know. It, it, it is really hard to pick. Um, like, there's just so many. Can't really pick Sid, because he only made, like, a, a brief appearance. Five minute appearance. He yeah, made, like, he a was thing, yeah. that he, like, he was claiming that freaking um spaceship for sure. You know he was only here for stuff as far as how you gonna call it a god? Yeah, he, he, there, there could be a spaceship be built without him being part of it. Yeah, but he's like, I I I, 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 I thought he was gonna be part a big part of the whole Garlean uh portion of the story. Honestly, he I figured he would be like all up in that. It would have made a lot of sense, but they didn't do it. But I guess it's like okay. a lot of, a lot of people were speculating game. that a lot of people were speculating that that was Nero, um, the 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 first um, the first regiment's captain or whatever that, that uh, killed himself. A lot of people in when they saw the you know the trailer for the official trailer for 6.0, a lot of people were like thinking that maybe was it Nero because it had a similar hairstyle. And you can only see it from, you know, behind. Then they were like, well, why wow. would Nero be wearing that? Never in my mind did I ever think that, but I didn't know he, I didn't know they even showed that because I was doing like, I was like avoiding stuff like the plague, so I didn't even know. Well, trailers, I, I watch trailers. I don't remember that scene. Like, I remember. You don't remember? A kind of, but uh, I think I need to rewatch it. I know when I get when I get when I get Celia to Endwalker, there's a there's a few things I'm, I'm gonna have you guys uh, uh, push uh, put me uh, take me through basically. Like I want to see what the zones look like um, flying around before you're able to fly. Like Ultimate right. I want to see what that looks like. I guess that would be interesting. Would you be able to actually touch the um eight the right? You can, yeah. A lot of times I'll let you do it, um, unless it's like the the one uh uh the one that was in Garland Ball. 
like well, that's literally a story, that, that, that was story related because they were using that for their power basically. Yeah. But there are a few other examples like in the Ruby Sea you can't go to the um turtle ninja turtle land because it's like blocked off. Until mm -hmm. you know you progress further in the story, we get actually supposed to go there. But yeah, most of the time you can't in fact just go there because I've given people rides to like Upper Kalusua or Upper Amarang. Uh, well, I mean Yangsha. Uh, me and Kim found that out to where if uh, if someone is further in the story on Sh on Stormblood, and and you you're flying with some, with some, someone is a passenger for you, with you, you can fly them through that big energy field. It'll it'll be an energy field for the person. But for you, it'll it'll be just like regular, and you just fly it through, kill and, and it doesn't kill them. They stay on the mountain, and just keep on going. I see. Why didn't you think? So my favorite character, I would say, I like oh, what Vinoth. they did with mine. Mine is Vanoth. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow! I never said I never said who my favorite character was. You did like three people, but okay. So you like Mine's Mama. So you like Mama. You can't like a Zim because sex is not you. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope that we get to meet uh, Unsundered Azim, like our counterpart. That would I be awesome. Agree. Technically but, speaking, we have because that's who saved us and she the sacrifice. I thought that no, I I thought that was um. Hey, no, that, that, I, no, I thought that that was uh, um, Emmett Selk, the remainder, the remaining of his spirit, because when he leaves, when he leaves the arena, he snaps his fingers and or he snaps oh, his fingers, yeah. but when he leaves, he does his little his little hand wavy thing that he does, that only Emmett Selk does, because he he walks away. And, and, he, and he waves his hand. Yeah, he's the only Ancien that does that. Well, we don't know all the facts. You might be right about that. I never actually really thought too much into that. I thought it was a Zim because, you know, you had a oh, Zim when I had what crystal and, you know, you're summoning. So you, I figured that's who you were summoning. And, you no, know, when, I, when I did that fight the first time, like, I, 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 like when I did that fight the first time and I saw that part, I almost broke down because I was like, Oh my god. Like, where did he come from? Like, he's supposed to be dead. Well, that's, I mean, it does pan out because of how we were able to uh, deal with the little bit, but I never actually put that through my head. I really always thought that was a Zim. So that wouldn't make some sense if it was... But at the same time, I would expect it that, you know, since he had a voice, they could at least gave him a voice. A little small bit voice part to them. He literally would be talking his ass off, but okay. Granted, uh -huh. granted, Emmett Selk did give you the crystal for as in. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's another thing that makes me think, though, because, like, at the end of the game, you know, I did beat the game a second time. The, the, one of the last lines that um, Emmett Silk actually said was like, you know, he was implying that, you know, it was a Zim, like, you know, that the seat of a Zim was the one that always did it from exploring, but he made that yeah, kind of make it sound like he might have been a Zim at one point before he became Emmett Silk or something, because like, he was like, because I did. Like, well, you know, I think he was just, I think he was pointing out that, you know, he's not a Zim, and he still did all that traveling around, That's and that it's, uh, it's your... It's your uh, duty as a them to uh, to do to do all that traveling around. That would make um, more sense because you know cause just how Emmett Phil's character is. You, you can never see him being in a them because of how what well, kind of a wild card the not and um we are basically. Yeah, because because a them uh, well he he was also not you know constantly traveling around trying to help people either. He had his or his she, goals or she. Um, no, Emmett Selk is a, a he. Zim? No, I thought you said a Zim. Never mind. No, I said because. It, anyways, Emmett uh, a Zim was always. Uh, they they said that that a Zim was always the one that was going around and keeping uh, an eye on the welfare of the world, helping people where 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 it was needed, and had the ability to summon forth, you know, 
allies. You. Yeah. So, and that, that's, that was that was sh that's Shadowbringer like re revelation right there though. Yeah, but I guess you're right that technically going back to it all, I guess that was in fact him itself. But anyways, if we do ever meet ourselves, it might be very difficult because they wouldn't be able to give it a voice because you know it was well, I guess they could do they two voices if they you're could. a male or female. Technically technically the warrior of flight gets a voice. But it's uh Absolutely. even though it's even though it's Albert Edward. We don't talk. We don't talk about our group. Our group, yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I. I mean, they. They could easily, you know, have two voices because they. They do stuff like that, anyways. Yeah, it wouldn't or be. Maybe, they wouldn't maybe, be maybe they'll just make them the silent type. No, we don't need more silent types. I, 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 it's bad enough that we're the silent type. I mean, I, I completely understand why we're the silent type. But still. I kind of, I kind of hope that 7.0, or or somewhere down the line, that they they maybe add another zone for the world unsundered. I think they will. Like, I mean, like I would, I would like to uh, to use that crystal in the beginning, the entrance yeah, crystal. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I tried to click on that a few times, but yeah, I think but I think it would have been awesome if if uh, when you first arrive in um, Elpis. If um, if that wasn't like an instance thing where you're by yourself, because that would be kind of cool to go in there and see and and uh, and like after you get your you know your in beginning, you know, to go in there and see all the the, the other mini players running around. Yeah, that'd be funny. You're a midget. You're all a midget. We need a mini spell. We need a lot of spells, and Garage like the only one that can do it. He's got float. Oh, and that's not true because your stole has got told. Anyways, my favorite character. I'm gonna finally say it. I believe my favorite character is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, and this is really weird that I'm saying this because I was not exactly a lover of this character, but I really like Emmett Silk in Endwalker. Like, I just really just got this new, like, respect and fondness of the Asians, or well, the ancients in general, but I, I really enjoy Emmett Silk's character. Like, it, I just smile every time I see that dude. I think they did a really good job of, like, just overall doing his character. I think Kim left the call accidentally. Or got she is having out. technical difficulties. I'm back now. For Welcome now. back. It, you guys were breaking up so bad I couldn't hear what anybody was saying. Oh. That's and been we like me for most of the call. Ay yeah. Well, we were just talking about our favorite character still and like I was just talking about how I think that I actually think that Emmett Silk is like my favorite character in Endwalker. I'm not saying he's my favorite character, period, but I really enjoyed Emmett Silk. Like, I just like what they did with him. You know, you only had such a little time, you got to interact with him, but it was just cool because, you know, Emmett Silk being Emmett Silk, as colorful as he is, it was just adorable, especially since he wasn't trying to kill us or stab us in the back. You know, seeing what his yeah. natural self would be, rather than being like you know, his like he has his duty to, um, you know, bring back the unsundered. And he still has that sass. Yeah, the sass that is really attitude. what makes his character awesome. He has a sense of responsibility. Yeah, very much. He's so. all work and no play. Pretty much. That's why he has his his sidekick hit the Ladeus. <laughs> like polar opposite. Oh, I can't believe I forgot about him. I love him. He's he's a he's just like the he's like the embodiment of a really cool guy. Like, you know, you just cannot not like him. Yeah. Like as soon as you meet him, you're like, I want you to be my friend forever. Yeah, exactly. And he's just so kind. Just genuinely kind. Oh, I love that. 
I want his hair, by the way, also. Yeah, I could, you could do that, but yeah. And he, he is generally like a... Kyle's hair. Hair. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, so the... I'm pretty sure you can get Kyle's hair if you get her outfit. Now, to be precise, her hair is like a part of the hood. Like, if you put that hood on, it becomes Kyle's hair. But you don't actually get Kyle's hair by itself. Like, you only have it when you literally become Kyle when you put the hood on, which is creepy. But her hair is actually really cute when they actually took it off. And I feel that they will release it at some point because they've shown it off finally. And that was just an unexpected surprise that I was actually happy about. When they, I was so I was actually super excited when they actually showed her taking her hood. Like, like, oh my god, she finally took it off! I don't, my, when I saw that, I was like, oh my god, that hair is so cute. It is cute. And then, there's a funny story that, com that ha comes with that. Because I saw her hair. And I was like, oh my god, that hair is so cute. I wonder if you can get it. I opened up the internet. I looked up Kryle's hair. I just typed in the word Kryle. The next word that came up in auto-populate on Google was death. And I was like, oh. Wow. Oh, because a lot of people thought that she was going to die. And so yep. I was like, I thought I spoilered myself on accident. So I didn't Google up anything else <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy related until after I finished the story. And I was convinced she was going to die at Endwalker. And when she didn't, I was very happy because I was really liking her. To be fair, I actually thought something really yeah. bad was going to happen to Crowell ever since Stormblood when she got kidnapped and um, you well, know, used to clone the Echo. It kind of seems like if the scion doesn't, if a scion doesn't make it into the trust party, then they 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 have a more of a chance of dying than the others. Not to mention, at least every scion at one point ends but, up being in a really fucked up situation, and they always pull through. But they kind me. of, they kind of, um, they kind of ended up making it a little bit more feasible that they can die by uh, because like. So, doing trust parties, right, with them, you, you it kind of makes you feel like they're invincible now because, like, well, I could use them in a trust party later on. How is that going to even be possible if they're dead? And it's because, and because I think that's one of the reasons avatar. why they're called avatars now, and they're, and they're it's yeah. not actually them. Yeah, that was I think that's why they changed thing. that. I was having that debate the entire time I was in the um, you know, Ultima Thule, and you know. Yeah, certain certain things that are like, man, like you know, like I feel like you know they're probably not gonna, but what if they are? Like you know, you, you just have to have that slight thought in the back of your head, like how will I do the level ninety dungeon? It's a it's a, it's a thing like that that um kind of like shows that the developers are watching what the players are saying because you know people probably brought that up a lot. And, I, and I'm pretty sure I've seen people say that online. Like, well, we know we know that they they're never going to die because they're trust party members. Yeah. So I, I think I think that's sad. the biggest reason why I'd they be did very that. Sad if you ever lose a trust person, because I love also, every one of them. Also, go back to the go back to the moon and talk to the watcher. He has updated um, uh, speech. Yeah, I, I need to do that because I remember somebody making some mention of it on like one of the Facebook pages. Like, uh, this MF is just sitting here now, but I didn't actually read what he said. Yeah, you know, he I, actually I really go back there. He has a, he has updated dialect because he um, he's updated to the point where he knows that uh, of the victory against Meteon. Well, I would hope so. Everybody else knows. They freaking yeah, about you, you know. But you know, I mean, sometimes they they don't update an NPC because they don't really play any more part, and maybe they don't expect yeah. people to go back to them. But to be fair, this is only six point oh, and the moon is in, is kind of very like not very vast. So they know we know that we're gonna have to talk to the watcher for some reason at some point. It ain't like the watcher's just gonna be like just chilling there and just cheer for the rest of the well, life. Definitely, definitely talk to him now. Then before his speech, uh, before his, uh, before his dialogue changes, I shall do that because he talks about Hydaelyn. Um, and with that being said, I'm getting um, news from the um, back office. You know, Cyrus is like, we need to wrap this up. So 
There's so much else that we can still talk about, but we will have to leave it for the next discussion. And don't worry, people, there will be more discussions. So, for Kimmy Kevin, me, this is Blackout, and of course, for Cyrus, Zero Thin, who's listening kind of, but not really, because it'd be super spoiler for all. Everybody, Paper. thanks for listening, and remember to keep on leveling up. Leveling up. That's right.